Hey guys, welcome to this artificial intelligence tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about Python versus C++ when we're, use, when we're doing artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning, and so on. So we're going to cover some different kind of things, when to use what language, what the advantages, disadvantages of both of the languages, and also what you should learn if you're just new to artificial intelligence, machine learning, and so on. But first of all, I'm going to join the Discord server. I'll link to the description here. You can join the channel, chat as well, computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee. Everything will go to create more ability quality content here on the channel. Also, if you're a member of the channel, I can also give you some guidance and help with your, uh, with your own problems in your own projects and so on. So thank you guys. So first of all here, we're just going to go through a couple of slides, talk about Python versus C++ when we're doing machine learning, artificial intelligence, and so on. We're going to talk about like what language should you use, what are the advantages in different kinds of situations, and so on. And then we're going to talk about some of the different kind of frameworks that we have uh, when we're doing machine learning, AI, deep learning, um, and so on. I'm also going to show you from some documentation from PyTorch so we can actually like, use Python and C++, we can see what are the differences when we use those two, and also some of the frameworks that both provide uh, Python like wrappers, API wrappers to the C++ code, but they also have some front-end C++ code, so it's actually like really easy to use the frameworks both in Python and C++, even though like everything is implemented under the hood in C++ for speed and performance. But first of all here, let's talk about like what, I, what language to use, what are the advantages, disadvantages for both of the, of the languages. So if you're just starting out with artificial intelligence, deep learning and so on, if you're not really familiar with implementing these different kind of things and setting them up, you should definitely just go with Python. It's, it, it's the easiest. You don't need to like think about any data structures, any data types and so on uh, that you need to store your variables in and also how to set it up. If you just use Python, it's really nice to pour it. We can see down here at the bottom, it's just less code. We have a lot of pre-built libraries and even API wrappers, frameworks to some C++ code. So for example, PyTorch, TensorFlow, and so on for doing like neural network training um, and, and like that. And we also have ease of learning, like it's really easy to learn Python and it's just really easy to get started. So if you're new to machine learning and deep learning and so on, it's just really easy. You don't need to like, uh, you just you don't need to like figure around like how can you set up this code and you also need to debug a lot when you're using C++. So if you're new, just go with Python, get started with that and you can always convert to C++. Often the case when we're using Python, we actually like just use Python to train our all our models, like load our data, train our models, uh, use the different kind of things within like um, deep learning. And then if we want to deploy our models for some different kind of like production cases or like production, uh, like products in production, we can actually like use C++ or if you already have like a C++ code base, you should also go with C++. But often the case is that we just train our models with Python and then you can either like choose to deploy your models with Python or C++. So when we have trained our model, we have loaded our data, trained our model, done some different kind of like tuning on our models. It's just really easy to just export our models and then imp import it again with either Python or C++. So that's not really like uh, the disadvantages for Python or using C++ because that is pretty similar, but it's just really easy to get started with C++. So one of the advantages with C++ is that we just get a way more like speed and performance compared to Python. If we're writing our own code, if you want to try to implement some of the things here by yourself, then C++ is just way faster and you will get better performance. But again, um, it will also be way hard to implement. You will get a lot more errors, bugs and so on. You need to debug, so it will take longer time. So I'll say like Python is really good for like prototyping different kind of things, setting up systems, trying them out, and then you can all, always like convert that to C++ and deploy it into your own projects or um, in, in production. So Python is more for like prototyping. You can also implement your models, like train your models and so on, and then deploy them on C++. So if you have some real time systems, you should definitely like implement, uh, like implement your inference or like the, your deployment of the models in C++. Or if you already have a code base in your production line, you should also go with C++. But again, it's really easy to convert back and forth between different kind of like languages. Also with the newest frameworks that we're using with, for example, uh, PyTorch. So here we're going to talk about some of the different kind of frameworks before we're going to jump into the PyTorch uh, documentation, where we can see the difference between Python and C++ when we're using these frameworks here for deep learning, artificial intelligence, and so on. So we have different kind of frameworks, all these frameworks, like there's a lot of frameworks implemented for Python. 
So all the framework is basically just a wrapper around some C++ code that is written and the, and the frameworks that we use. Like the most common frameworks here for Python, they're really well optimized, so they're actually really fast. So if you're just calling the methods from Python with these different kind of frameworks, we, we still get the same performance as we do if we just write these different kind of things in, uh, in, in C++ and use the code directly in C++ because these are basically just wrappers for some C++ code, which is really well optimized. So you get some really nice results when you're using these pre-built binaries here or the frameworks provided. So if you're just using like general artificial intelligence here, uh, in general, you can use like scikit, numpy and so on. You might know numpy, but we've used that throughout a lot of different kind of videos on this channel here. So these are just some of the frameworks that we can use for artificial intelligence, do some like linear algebra, uh, different kind of cal calculations, operations on matrices and so on. And then we have these different kind of like deep learning frameworks that we talked about throughout the deep learning and artificial intelligence tutorial. So we have PyTorch and then we have TensorFlow and Keras, where these are pretty much like, they're pretty much the same. PyTorch is maybe a bit more popular now uh, compared to TensorFlow and Keras. But if you're new, like the learning, like the learning cur curve is really, really uh, low. So if you're new to deep learning, artificial intelligence, go with Python and TensorFlow and Keras. You basically just need to call a couple of functions and then you're actually like up running. You, you implement your own neural network, you load in a data set with just one function and then you can just train neural network with one line or, or like two lines of code again. And then you can just do your inference, do new predictions on images or like new data that your model hasn't seen before. So you just need to write a couple of lines of code with, with, with TensorFlow and Keras to actually like have a deep learning uh, model up and running like for example, neural network. Where PyTorch is a bit more high core, you have some more like customization. You can do some more things in PyTorch compared to like TensorFlow and Keras. Uh, so we have a bit more flexibility, but again, the learning curve is also a bit steeper compared to TensorFlow and Keras. So the last thing here that we're going to do is basically just go to PyTorch website here and see how we can actually use PyTorch in C++ uh, compared to Python, for example. So everything, again, everything is implemented, it's written in C++, it's really uh, highly optimized code in C++, and then, it, it, and then they actually just make wrappers for Python, but now they've also done it for the C++ frontend or like they call it C++ frontend, which is just like some kind of like C++ interface for the Python or like from, for the C++ code running, uh, running behind everything. So we can also read the exact same thing here. The PyTorch C++ front end is a pure C++ interface to the PyTorch machine learning framework. While the primary interface to PyTorch naturally is Python, this Python API sits atop of a, a, like a substantial C++ code base, providing foundational data structures and functionalities such as tensors and automatic differentiation. So here we can basically just see we have the C++ front end and then we have the Python API which is basically just calling C++ functions from the C++ code base. So if you just scroll down here, we can see some motivation for like using C++ compared to Python. So if you want to do some low latency systems, if you want to do like real time systems where speed performance is really, really like really, really like necessary and you can even like run your system. If you're running Python, it's a good way to use like it's a good idea to use C++ uh, versus Python. It could be, for example, like reinforcement learning research in pure C++ game engines. Uh, you can get like higher frames per seconds and lower like latency if you have some requirements for that. So using a, a pure C++ library is much better fit uh, to such an environment here. Python may not be tradable uh, at all because of the slowness of the Python interpreter. So Python is an interpreted language where C++ is a compiled language where uh, where we get the speed and performance from. So that's that's the reason why Python is so much slower compared to C++ if we're writing our own code in C++ and not using all the frameworks that we've been through um, in the slides in this video here. So we can also have some highly multi-threaded environments. So if you want to use that, it is also better to use C++ compared to Python. Or if you have an ex existing C++ code base in your project, you should definitely just go with C++, keep it to C++ because we have this really nice uh, front end here from PyTorch that we can just use it. You just need to call like a couple of functions as well. Um, so it's also like fairly intuitive compared to Python by with using this C++ front end uh, that they've implemented. So again, also in a lot of pro products in like production, if you have like vehicles driving around, like a lot of them is using C++ because they need low latency systems. They, they're running real time systems out in the real world. So the products in the real world are real time systems. 
So most of them is actually like implemented in C++. All the logic is, is implementing C++. So in that case, you just stick with C++. Again, you can train your models in Python, convert it, implement it, deploy it with C++, and then use it in that way. So down here, the last thing is basically just, we can go down compare some of the code and then functions that we need to call if you're using like, for example, Python or C++. So basically here, we can just see an example of how to create a tensor here uh, with the I here free. So we just have uh, a one in the diagonal here in our tensor. So if you want to use C++, we can basically just go in here, tensor, uh, tensor. So when we're using C++, we need to specify the data type or like the data structure that we're going to use which is not the case when we're using Python. So that's why it's easier to just get started with Python um, if you're new to machine learning and so on. Then we're just printing out the tensor. If we want to do the exact same thing in Python, we can go down here and see some other different kind of examples. Um, we can also just scroll up here again. If we want to run this here, we can basically just call torch, um, torch.i free. And then we can just assign that to our variable in Python and that will be the exact same code so if you scroll down to the bottom, if you want to design a neural network or like define a neural network here that we can train on some data set, then we can go down here, see how it's implemented in Python. So in Python, we'll just going to create a class here for our neural network. Then we just set our parameters here or all the different kind of layers. So here we have our weights and our biases in our neural network. And then we can do a feed forward here in our neural network so we can actually like do our training. If you want to do this in C++, we can see that this is actually like a bit more complicated. It looks a bit more complex just when we look at it. But again, this is from the C++ front end. So it's actually like still really easy. We, just, we need to write the same lines of code, but we just need to take a bit more care with the syntax. Like the syntax is a bit more complex when we're working with C++ compared to Python. That's why like most of the things is actually like just implementing Python, all the prototypes and in Python is just way faster. You don't need to take care of the syntax. And again, it does the same, it trains the same neural network, it gets the same performance and so on because the Python functions is act like just C++ functions that gets called. So the performance, the speed and so on, is still the same. And at the end, we can still export our models and implement it or like export, import it, and then deploy our neural networks both in C++ and Python. It doesn't really matter what language you, you, you train your neural network in. So these are just some of the examples. You can go down the script here, see some other different kind of examples again here we can create a neural network with a linear layer and some other different kind of biases. And then we have a forward, which is basically just our a linear layer of our input plus our, our biases. And then down here, we can see that these are actually just two lines of code and then our forward, where down here we have a bit more complex syntax again. So the syntax is a bit more complicated, but if you get used to it, it's actually just really easy and maybe as easy as Python when you just get used to it. But again, there's not really, there's not really any like um, advantages using C++ over Python unless you actually like, need to implement it in C++ and train the neural network in C++. So that's it for this video here. We've been through like when you should actually like, use C++ over Python and so on. And also what are the advantages of using Python and all, what are the advantages of using C++. In which situation should you use one language over the other? And also what language should you learn if you're just starting out with programming? Uh, and getting into machine learning, deep learning, and so on. So thank you guys for watching this video here. Remember the subscribe button and bell notification on the video. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more of it in the future. I'm doing a, a deep learning tutorial if you want to know more details about like how we can create neural network from scratch, the theory behind neural network, how to actually like, learn, and so on. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here. Or else we'll see you next video, guys. Bye for now.